So literacy is connected to my interest because I started in pure linguistics at the beginning and moved more into applied linguistics. And by 1995, I was almost out of the foreign language, you know, teaching first language, second language, or the variety of methodologies and all that, and more into thinking about the social impact of, you know, the language and its impact on society. So I was drawn into literacy. Uh, we created a project that was funded by uh, uh, USAID, and uh, that brought me to Philadelphia for the first years of the 90s. It probably, I think it started in 1991, 90, 92, 93, 94. And this was with uh, the University of uh, uh, University of Nigeria, uh, University in uh, uh, Botswana, University of Tunis, and University of Philadelphia, you know, of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the UNESCO heard about that project and gave the university money to create an international institute of linguistics. So that's what brought me to the States, and I came here to be the co-director of that institute with Dr. Van Wagner. And uh, so for six years, I worked on the various aspects of literacy. Uh, you know, we organized meetings all over the world, and uh, so by the time that second effort, which is really a completely new direction for me, a uh, new challenge, uh, working with the top specialists of literacy while, you know, your connection with literacy was reading and, you know, everything I knew about linguistics was not enough to make me, you know, kind of meet the challenge. So it was very important to me because that was one way of regenerating myself and getting into, you know, something new. I, I had been teaching Yoruba and linguistics for many, many years in Nigeria before I came here and um, I realized that we didn't have any dictionary of the type that I could use in the classroom at the university level. Uh, my initial area of research was in the group of words we refer to as idiophones in African languages. And I wanted to build a dictionary of that. So when I came here, Mark Lieberman, our executive our director, said rather than work on idiophones, why don't you work on the whole dictionary? And I was really excited about it because I, I thought that was very unique. So um, that was how we started. And it wasn't quite clear exactly what it would involve or what it would take. Um, but when we started, the situation became clearer and clearer. And we got the first version out in 2008. Uh, right now, what we want to do is to um, <coughs> uh, accumulate data that we, that we could use for further work in uh, tree banking on the Yoruba language and um, then we would also do an audio recording of all the lexical entries. We have about 142,000 Yoruba entries in the database that we want to record. Uh, so that, that's there now. But presently um, I'm doing a lot of conversation recordings that would enable us to move the work further. That's how far that's what I'm doing right now. And the conversations will be transcribed uh, into Yoruba and then um, translated to English and set in terms of par parallel, parallel text. text. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I arrived here from the uh, University of Quebec at uh, Montreal. Uh, after my thesis, um, Dr. Mark Lieberman, uh, I had uh, I had benefited from a grant uh, to come and uh, do my postdoc at uh, IRCS, where Mark was working. So when I arrived, 
I worked there uh, for the first uh, years in, in 94, from 94 to 96, when this dictionary project, uh, with the arrival of uh, uh, Iwala, uh, took, you know, started. And uh, we both, he said, uh, Mark asked us if that was uh, something interesting for us, and we said uh, yes, and uh, uh, this is how it started. So uh, this is how we are now, but the project itself is not limited to the dictionary because the dictionary is not, uh, is just part of the, the project. We want to make a, a database of those languages, uh, uh, a database with all the written material and all the, you know, the things I can, we can record on the ground there, and then come work on them, make them uh, available, and that can contribute to enrich the, the dictionaries at the same time to uh, provide something uh, on the net. People who are interested in those languages can always go to first when they want to work on those languages and uh, uh, make their research uh, easier than, than before. Our annotation moved very slowly in terms of guidelines that were appropriate and that dealt you know, successfully and uh, in a satisfactory way with the realities of corpus-based you know, language. Corpus-based language is very different from what, uh, let's say, grammar and grammar books describing languages uh, seen by their authors uh, through their experience. I mean, uh, you get to see how people use the language and uh, the rules, the traditional rules of grammar by themselves do not necessarily cover what a corpus is going to show you. And I found that um, written Yoruba which had been carefully, you know, edited and, you know, proofread, it's different from, you know, live conversation. Because you have pauses, you have uh, stumblings, you have false starts, you have mispronunciations, you have incomplete sentences, you have fragments and things like that. And it's a different world entirely. The grammar is still there, but you could almost tell that, yeah, okay, and I and uh, I don't I don't correct anybody. So just as you speak, that's 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 the way we record it, and that's the way it will be transcribed. It's clear that uh, people need, you know, to know more about language, and therefore, uh, the richer the you know the richer the analysis, the richer the annotation, the more they can reach a certain amount of knowledge and also closeness to the realities of the language you know that they are translating languages are full of ambiguities languages are full of other you know kind of implicit aspects in their culture that are not necessarily surface level you know uh, and easy to understand so in my view uh, using tree banks and other ontologies. Now there are all kinds of other forms of, you know, there are prop banks, which is the adding another layer, you know, uh, which is the semantic layer to the first two layers. And prop banks use tree banks to start with, and then they work on either verbs or nouns, therefore on both. There are also other, you know, types of uses dealing you know, with pragmatic discourse tree bank. We don't do any here, but some people have done it elsewhere. Uh, so all those that's rich, you know, annotation is uh, definitely going to, uh, and has improved, and is going to continue improving the results of the machine translation groups. So that over the years, we have seen people do much better in Arabic because of the, our data and because of our three bank you know uh, you know linguistic resources